Here's a brief video tutorial on how to use PowerPoint to draw. You're probably familiar with PowerPoint as presentation software. And you can do things like open a slide, add a title, add a subtitle, and so forth. You probably even know that you can add in a box if you need to um, in order to illustrate something. But I'm hoping in this video to show you that PowerPoint also has a number of tools that allow you to draw. And by drawing, you can convey a lot of interesting information. So for this video, what we're going to do is draw a neuron. Okay. Once we've drawn it, we'll be able to use it as a study guide. So where do we start? Well, if you're on a PC, you can go to the Home menu, and then you can see there are a bunch of tools here. If you're on a Mac, you can also find these tools, but you may have to go to the Home menu and it's going to look a little bit different. So we're going to want the Scribble tool, and we're going to want to draw the soma and create a full um, object. We can then draw in some dendrites. And again, these don't need to be pretty. This is just a doodle, just as we would do on paper, except as you'll see, we'll be able to do some manipulations that make the PowerPoint drawing a little more powerful. So there's the axon hillock. We're then going to draw in the axon itself. And we're going to draw in a collateral. We're going to also add in a couple of terminal buttons, like this. All right. And then these could be dendrites from other neurons. Finally, we want to add in our myelin sheath here, and I could just use the rectangle, but I'm going to go ahead and draw these in just to show you. It doesn't take that long. And it gives you a more, a more organic feel here. Okay. And I can draw each one of these separately, or I can take advantage of the fact that it's a computer. So if I select this and press Control C and then Control V or Command C and Command V if I'm on a Mac, you can go ahead and grab that and rotate it. And you can see I can add in my myelin here without having to redraw it. Okay. So once I have the parts here, I see I missed one part, so I'm going to go ahead and use the circle tool to draw in my nucleus. Then what I want to do is select everything and right click over one of the objects and I want to make the outline black and I want to make the outline thick. All right. Now what I want to do is select that in the nucleus and press command or control X and then control V or command V. That moves it closer to you. So now it's the top image. So if I move this, I move it behind. You see how that works? So I can make it look a little bit better here. All right. Now what I want to do is change the color of each of these. So if I select the Soma here, I can change the fill color to a nice light blue. I can leave that a darker blue. I can select this and make it an orange. And I can select each one of these to be a gray. And I selected multiple ones by holding down control and then selecting each one of them. I'm going to make those a light gray because they're fatty. And then I'm going to select this one and show you another interesting tool. So I'm going to make it red. Now if I want this same one to look exactly like this, I can just select on that and do Format Painter and then select there. Now I want to label, and I'm going to select the text box and type in Soma Cell Body. And I want to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger and center it. And if I right click after on the edge line there, I can give it an outline. Give it an outline, and I'm going to make that outline dashed. Right. 
So there's the cell body, and then I'll use the arrow feature to draw from here to here. And I'll go ahead and use that paint feature to make this a dashed arrow. All right, so I lost my arrowhead. If I want to get it back, I can right click again and do my outline. Um, and I can go to more features, but I actually don't need the arrow. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that, hold shift and click on that, right click and group them. Now they're a single unit. So I can select that and press Control V and Control C. And I'll add this to my own sheath. All right. Select off, then I'll select this again. And I'll grab this outer line. And we want to point out that this is a node of Rondier. I'm going to select these again and move it right around here. I'm going to move this line so it's not quite so much in the way like that. I'm going to draw in another line here and again I'm going to select this one here and the format painter and go ahead and select there. And I'll do delete and collaterals. So there are the collaterals. And then I can select this again and move it down. And I can select this, move it down. And I can label this one as the terminal button. Terminal button with two T's, not three. And I'll select this and move it down here. Grab my line and point it at this orange one and grab here and move it to the top. And if I double click in here, Call that the axon hillock. And then I'll select this again and grabbing the line, move over here, and I will go ahead and point at this. And then I'll copy and paste that command C or control C, depending on which operating system you're using. And I can do that again and do dendrite. All right. So we have a neuron with all the different pieces on it. All right. And now what's really powerful about PowerPoint is that I can go ahead and go over to this slide, right click, and do duplicate. And then I'm going to duplicate again. And so on this one, I'm going to go ahead and select all of them. And I'm going to have the text turn white. And so now, all of a sudden, I have a slide that I can use to test myself. So I've drawn this structure. Okay, I know what all the pieces are. Now I can remove the labels and test myself. I can come down here, and then I can go ahead and select all of these. And because I've grouped this, when I press delete, it goes away all at once. When I press on this one, not all of it's grouped, so I'm going to have to do both of them here. Delete, delete, delete. And now I have a study tool where I actually need to know what the different parts are, not necessarily clued into where the different parts are. Okay? And so together, the PowerPoint gives us a sense as to what tools are available to use. It also gives us a way of submitting this electronically. It allows you to know that if you're ever presenting, um, you have control over what shows up on the slide. And so you can use those tools. And then finally, you can use it as a study aid. So I hope you found that helpful. All the best.